try to do three reviews in a row in the future when this evolving list has a lot more entries you probably won't even notice but when life throws you time travel sometimes you gotta make travel aid well the next movie i'm going to review is batman ninja which is a batman anime created by the same person who created afro samurai um and i've never seen it but from what i've heard it's exceptionally weird and this was no different plot is that at the very beginning of the movie, like the very first thing that happens is Batman is fighting Gorilla Grodd at Arkham Asylum. Shut it down, Grodd. It's over. You're finished. No, I'm too close. You will not interfere with my experiment this time, Batman. And Gorilla Grodd sets off a time machine bomb that sends everyone back to feudal Japan with all the warring nations. And like right away, Joker, Penguin, Poison Ivy, and... And like one, maybe two more people, I forget. Like take over every feudal state in Japan at that time. And now they're the ones at war with each other. At Japanese history, they were at war during that time. All the main kingdoms, essentially. But Batman, because he almost escapes the bomb, and he goes in like two minutes later than everyone else, that translates to like two years later in, in time travel bomb code. No one knows how time travel works. What the two year difference? Who knows how time travel works? And I thought it was very entertaining. It was really weird. Like, it, like towards the end, like, at one point, a whole bunch of monkeys get together to create a giant monkey. And then a bunch of bats get on those monkeys to turn that, that giant monkey into a bat monkey. Except it's just Batman. Except he's giant now. Um, a lot of exceptionally weird things happen like that. There's, like, giant robots fighting all over the place that they go... They all form together as, like, Voltron. Ah! Unite and serve the sixth heavenly deity, Lord Joker! <laughs> Let's see, most of the main bat villains are in it and everything, so that's pretty cool. And also the bat heroes, and you get to see them all dressed up as if they were living in feudal Japan for a while, because that's what they were doing. Like, the first time you meet the Joker, he's like a Castlevania boss. He's like throwing fans, they're cutting trees and everything. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> You're the one who keeps throwing them. Because you won't let them hit you. But the animation is amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. I was, like, blown away. It was, like, paying homage to the best parts of Japanese anime throughout the years. While also doing its own thing and creating its own style. Much like Batman being an anime character, it combined the American stylings with the Japanese stylings and to make something that was entirely its own. Now that all your toys are busted, you better start thinking what you're going to do for a second act. <laughs> Huh? Catwoman's in it, and like at first I was like, up, oh, that's a complaint of mine, because like it seemed like she was just like a full on good guy. Catwoman's always been an anti hero, you know. The first time Batman sees her, he's like, Why were you at Arkham Asylum? Uh, and she was just like, I was just patrolling the area, following Grodd and stuff, you know. And I was like, Are they, they train her like she's a superhero? Do they not understand who Catwoman is? Don't be afraid. It's just a little cat call. Catwoman. But then, like, just as Catwoman does in everything, the first moment she could, she betrayed Bruce and ran away. Catwoman fears commitment, most of all, obviously. Isn't eating a banana a little cliche? Says the cat burglar in the cat costume. I also thought there was too much exposition, especially in the first half of the movie. I mean, there's a lot to explain and everything, but, you know, show, don't tell. That's, I'll just leave it at that. It does get a bit overly ridiculous. I would say that as a complaint, even though I do like the weirdness of the movie, and like I think like the, all the weird things happening really works for the film by the end of it. It can be a little too um, ridiculous and a little too weird in that way, where you're just like, okay, I guess this is happening. Sure, why not? Who's she? <laughs> you got it. And though that works for the film, it also detracts from it because you have to suspend your disbelief more and more as the movie goes on. It can definitely be too ridiculous for some. I liked it a lot, but I could see a lot of people being like really turned off by this movie because of that. And they're also in feudal Japan at one point like Alfred. Tea? Hard to come by in this neck of the woods. Hope you find it to your liking.
Alfred. Has the Batmobile with them. Of course, Batman's just like, yeah, let's go get the Joker in it. And, and I thought for a minute, like, are they just going to use the Batmobile to fuel Japan? And I was being, and it was like, no, we're going to get even more ridiculous than that. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> now the Batmobile being there seems fairly tame by comparison. I can't believe you didn't tell me, Selena. I know, but I wanted to see the look of surprise on your face. I felt the plot lacked focus. It kind of gains it here and there, especially towards the end where just like about one thing, about one giant robot versus another. Gorilla Grodd and his army and Batman versus his army by the end. But in the middle, it just felt like it was like jumping around between things. And also like it does a thing where it kind of has a false ending where you think for half a second about halfway through the film that the film is over. And like, oh, the main conflict's over. It's like, oh, right, they still have all this other stuff to do. But like just the way it does it, it both kind of works for the film but also doesn't at all because it just shines a light on how little focus this movie has during that section of the film. You killed yourself! Ah, that's what I've been trying to tell you, you stupid bat! I'm having a party in hell! It should really have a solid plot, a solid through line for like Batman to follow and carry him through the end. But then it's like, oh, but we have to defeat the Joker first and then he defeats the Joker. And you're like, okay. Is, is the movie over? Is that it? And like, no, there's this whole other thing. With that in mind, there's kind of, it's kind of like a little ridiculous at how much it happens. It's almost like a deus ex machina, except like the opposite of that. It'd be more like a devil in the machine or something. Just when you think things are going well, something else turns up to like just ruin every everyone's day, basically. Oh, I've got options, Bats. And because of that, it feels like there's a lot of jumping around plot-wise. Like, Batman's finally on the right course. Like, oh no, there's another thing I have to go and take care of. And I just wish that the plot line had a bit more focus because of that. So his final thoughts or whatever, I mean, it's mostly good. You know, I especially like the animation and the weirdness, except when it was a little too weird. The plot is something to be desired, and I would say there's not really any stronger themes, and sometimes it feels like maybe it's going, like, for, like, some type of stronger message or something, but it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's just some fun movie with Batman traveling to Japan, done with crazy animation, e equally crazy storyline. And I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I would say it's a really good movie, but I wouldn't say it's great, or a masterpiece, or something that'll, like, stand the test of time, or anything like that. But it was a fun 90 minutes. I'd recommend it for anyone who likes Batman, and anime. We're stuck between a rock and a hard place. This is only my second movie, so one movie up on the list so far, and this is going above Gen 13.